Antarctica. Not an ice island like the Arctic, but a frozen continent locked perpetually in pack ice. Only in summer can ships penetrate this shield to reach the silent land beyond. There's animal life of a kind, scraps that cling to the ice and rock. But few of these creatures can live on the continent itself, except in summer. Protected only by fur or feathers, the rest must retreat to the edge of the ice pack when winter comes. In this bare and inhospitable place, not even the simplest form of vegetation can survive all winter long. Yet man has managed to establish himself here. Throughout the year, scientists of many nations live in lonely isolation in places that even the animals shun. Australia has two Antarctic stations. Mawson is the larger of them. For 12 months at a time, this is home for the men of the expedition. They've brought their whole world with them, but it's barely enough to survive. A few huts, 26 men, and two-thirds of a continent to themselves. Four months of this time is spent in the dark. The long polar night lasts from May to August. The summer is four months of perpetual daylight. Don't forget you're listening to KOLD, the heart of Antarctica. At Mawson and other Antarctic bases, the problems of all tiny, isolated communities are faced and met. Not only are the men carefully screened before being accepted, but everybody is kept busy. Only the cook is exempted from helping with the daily chores. Most of the men bury themselves in their work. Mawson is a research station. In particular, auroral physics, meteorology and medicine are the subject of intensive study programs. The isolation and adverse environment are turned to advantage. One program records the reactions of men to Antarctic conditions. The physical and mental effect of their long confinement is studied. When the long night ends, Antarctica comes alive again. During the endless daylight, field trips are possible, some of them lasting as long as three months. Telurometry readings taken all over the continent are adding to our knowledge of the Earth's magnetic field.
the measurements taken of ice thickness are directly related to the Australian work in meteorology and weather forecasting. High altitude balloons give scientists an insight into how Antarctica's five million cubic miles of ice affect the oceans and winds. Much of Australia's weather starts in Antarctica. Today, the outside world is closer to Antarctica. The American research teams fly in regularly during the summer. For them, home is just a few hours away. Of the bases set up by the United States, that at the South Pole is one of the oldest. Although constructed on the surface only 10 years ago, it's already sunk beneath the ice and will soon have to be rebuilt. Under the Antarctic Treaty of 1959, all countries engaged in research on the continent have agreed to set aside military activity and territorial claims. Information and personnel are freely exchanged. Like all facilities in Antarctica, the para-rescue unit run by the Americans is available to everybody. To the scientists, national considerations are of minor importance. The search for knowledge takes them all over the continent and beneath the coastal ice as well. In waters close to freezing, this research is both difficult and dangerous. One can never forget that here in Antarctica, nature is the enemy. The annual relief of the Australian expedition is by ship. Sailing from Australia in December, it reaches the Antarctic Circle two weeks later. The journey takes it through the roughest seas in the world. For the men on the ice, this is the loneliest time. Memories of homes and families become more immediate when they realize that the long year is almost over. The anesthesia of isolation finally wears off. Things they've taken for granted, friends, jobs, seem suddenly strange. Even the dogs assume a different significance. These animals have been their helpers for almost a year. The bond established with them won't easily be broken. Only one barrier remains to the ship, ice. More than a hundred miles of it 
six feet thick in some places, must be broken through before the ship reaches Mawson. Ships have been stuck for weeks, even forced to turn back. Outlying parties are called in, equipment brought back to base. There are crises, but these are overcome. Everybody wants to be there at the moment when the long isolation comes to an end. The brief period between ship arrival and departure is crowded with work for everybody. Jobs have to be explained, the enlarged workforce directed towards unloading, building, repairing. For the men just arriving, these are days of doubt and apprehension. Is this all there is? Some huts clinging to the rock, a cold grey sea. It's only after a time that one comes to terms with life here.
the outgoing crew have more complex emotions. The strongest of them, curiously, is regret. A year spent in such a place cannot help but change a man. The storms of autumn throw up another barrier, adding to their mood. Nature has made a sanctuary of Antarctica, protecting it with wind and ice. But still men live there, more of them each year, painfully piecing together the story of the Earth. <laughs> 